record. We are two ninjas, ball and movers. Yeah. And Brandon Collins. That's me. It's just the brand for your moving needs. Medium popcorn. Woo! You haven't seen it, well, we're gonna spoil it. Who's the master? Well, that's your one. What's up, little biscuits and sun-dried tomatoes? This is your boy, Eddie Collins. Guys, this is Justin Brown. And before we get started with this movie news and trailer reactions mini episode, Justin, we got some comments on our Spotify account. Ooh, doggy. That's right, folks. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> you can leave us a five-star review on your favorite podcast application. Leave us a comment. We will read it on the show. Or you can go to Spotify. They now allow you to post comments on episodes, and we'll read those on the show as well. So a recent comment we got was from our Heavyweights episode from Courtney uh, Akaya, Akana, who wrote, it was a great episode for another childhood classic. I agree with both of you that the lead is obviously Jerry, but Josh had the charisma of a lead. And I also agree that the third act not only lacked in Ben Stiller absence, but also was nonsensical with the whole competition. Stiller being out of his mind from the jump not only saved this film, but made it a classic it is. Yeah. I give it a large popcorn. Full heartily agree. Heavyweights, Heavyweights is made because of Ben Stiller. Like it's a classic yeah. comedic performance. Yeah, in our eyes. Um, and then Kevin responded to our theater camp episode. He wrote, great quirky mo movie with some wild, intriguing performances, niche view into a world I knew nothing about. I knew you were going to say vitamin C, laughing emoji. <laughs> That's right. As we go on, we remember. Please stop. Okay. Just please stop. Right. <laughs> Let's just stop that right yeah. there. I do want to shout out um, from our Fall Guy episode. Um, and folks, I know there's been other comments in the past. We will um continue reading future ones because there's some of you folks that have been engaged on the spotify for a while but kevin wrote in regards to the fall guy episode about ryan gosling because i forgot i said this he said landon my name is brandon oh god because i said that about the walk to remember movie mm -hmm. how the main character's name was landon mm -hmm. i got all like oh shit anyways he said <laughs> it's a fun movie and gosling is just so likable always glad to see what's the duke in anything uh, enjoyed the meta-ness of the movie. Stunt Dog was great, but hey, I love dogs. Sure. So, again, folks, uh, if you go on Spotify, you can leave a comment. We'll read it on the show. Um, yeah, we appreciate all the love and support we get on the various platforms. Uh, just keep commenting, posting five-star reviews. It all helps. And if you really, really love the show and you have the budget, consider subscribing to Patreon. Patreon.com slash Medium Popcorn. We got $2, $5, $10, $15 packages. It all supports the show. It's a, it's a beautiful time over there. Mm -hmm. You know, we yeah. taught the fans and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, come be part of the family. Come be part of the Patreon family. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, we're going to jump into some movie news. Uh, Justin, anything uh, from our last, uh, no, since our last movie news and trailer reaction episode that popped out of you that's happened recently that you're like, oh, shit, that's in the news? I feel like you, <laughs> you're leading me somewhere, but I don't know where you, you got to talk about this shit. OK, <laughs> all right. Well, I'll start us off. God damn it. <laughs> but uh, talking about Entertainment Weekly did a cover story on Daredevil Born Again, which is a uh, um, which initially was believed to be completely separate from the Netflix of Daredevil. But after a creative overhaul, the show will now feature the return of the actors who weren't originally going to be in the Disney Plus revival and a story which harkens back to the man without fear's previous adventures. Um, uh, Charlie Cox, who plays, uh, you know, Daredevil, said the first day on set with Deborah, myself and Eldon was really special because that scene was written like a scene that we were reminiscing over old times and all things we've done. And it just so happened that we shot that very early on and we hadn't seen each other for years. I mean, maybe not years, but we certainly hadn't been together, the three of us, for a long time. Yeah. So there was really literally no acting required. The conversation we we're having in the green room was the same conversation we were having in the scene, pretty much. And then he went on to add, Deborah and I had a scene where we find an old box. Am I allowed to say that? I think I can say that. We had a scene where we were looking through a box and we find stuff from the past. And it's real stuff from the past. It was stuff from the old show. It was like a photo frame we used on the set eight years ago. And we're looking at it together. Um, and then Vincent D'Afrio went on to elaborate uh, that there are storylines that reach back to the original series where our characters are coming from, where we are, and where we're going. Some of these threads lead back. Um, so we're, uh, we're building on to the previous seasons. I mean, the trailer, the leaked trailer, it showed you got Bullseye back, yep. which is great. That guy was amazing mm -hmm. in that role. Um, I definitely think Karen Page is going to die. Why do you think so? Uh, I just, 
given that she was shot to be coming back, the the actress Deborah, uh, I believe her, uh, what's her last name? I want to make sure. I, Deborah Ann Wall. She was so surprised to be, you know, asked back. Mm. I, I don't think she was on set very long from what I've seen in set pictures and stuff like that. Mm. John Bar- Barenthal, of course, is back as the yeah. Punisher. Um, it's going to be interesting because I do feel like it's kind of shitty to be doing a continuation of the Netflix series when you didn't bring back the original creators yeah. and showrunners like Drew Goddard and stuff. At least to my knowledge, they're not involved. Um, but I'm hoping that's good. Yeah, I'm hoping. Yeah. The trailer looked pretty dope. Yeah, it does. The- and it's just a great cast. Like Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Afrio as Daredevil and Kingpin, respectively, are just that's just brilliant casting. John Barenthal as the Punisher, that's brilliant as well. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll Indeed. see how they we'll see how they make that work because again, that means you gotta bring back the other dudes. You gotta bring back Luke Cage. You gotta bring like if you want to continue those stories, which they might just continue to MCU without them. Yeah. And be like, they don't exist. Yeah, true. Or you use which uh, I can... Secret Wars to just fucking yeah. reboot everything. Uh, I don't know. But yeah. speaking of things that this didn't necessarily work and aren't gonna be brought back. Uh, the essentials of oh, the essentials. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the turtles. The turtles uh, you know, is, the essentials are coming back. Like, yeah. right? <laughs> they well respect. Uh, the the turtles uh, is officially scrapped. Um, so basically, it's over. You know, obviously, <laughs> no, no, seriously, it's over. I mean, um, you know, obviously during. The, the pandemic or just like right after uh, they had some flops with Ant-Man and, and the Wasp, Quantumania. Eternal was the first one that started, like, because mm-hmm. that was the first uh, Rodden score they ever got yes. in the Marvel movie. So th- this didn't do well. I think most people were kind of leaning is like, yeah, they're not going to do a sequel to that, even though this left a lot of things on the table. Yeah, it did. It did. I think if you take out the post credit scenes, like with Harry Styles as Thanos' brother, you take out the Kit Harrington, uh, Carrot Dane Whitman tease with Blade. You take out those things. I think it's pretty solid. I think it's a pretty solid movie. Mm. I think it's slow, but I actually think there's some stuff in there that's pretty fucking good. Yeah, I mean, yes, it's not all bad. By no means is it all bad, but the other side <laughs> of it is is that like people just really didn't fuck with this franchise. Yes, what they, they were trying to uh, create. And, you know, at that point, sometimes you just got to cut your losses. Uh, I think probably some of the characters will you know, reprise uh, th- those characters in different uh, films, like maybe Secret Wars or some, uh, somewhere down the line. But as far as a full on Eternals movie, that is done. Yeah, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. But uh, what I'm is happening? Surprised. What is yeah, yeah, me neither. Me neither. I mean, Bring back Gemma Chan, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to mm-hmm. bring her back. Selma, you, spoiler alert, she ain't coming back. She dead. Um, but Angelina Jolie is still alive. That's true. In the MCU. But she got dementia, right? Yeah. Her, her character was like going crazy. Yeah. That was kind of hot. When she was like going crazy and trying to kill she them. She won't remember what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Take speaking that. of what is happening, uh, Chick-fil-A is apparently moving into the entertainment space but plans to launch a slate of originals on its own streaming platform. That's right, folks. We got Peacock, and now we're getting Chick-fil-A. Um, <laughs> Deadline reported that the fast food firm has been working with a number of major production companies, including some of the studios, to create family-friendly shows, particularly in the unscripted space. It is also in talks to license and acquire content. So I feel like this if they're going to do this, they do, like, it's going to be like Hallmark. Hallmark uh, Probably. kind of films yeah. and like, you know, really Christian films and things like that. Like that would be a platform for that kind of stuff that they even pl- probably play at Chick-fil-A. So they have content f- flowing at Chick-fil-A to keep people in those seats for longer, you know, as they're watching a meal, keep those kids sit, uh, you know, uh, seated. And then, you know, you buy more product. Maybe. I mean, yeah, they got to incorporate somehow into the chicken sandwiches, right? Oh, well, no, it's also free advertising for all of their uh, stuff. Oh god! Just imagine you're trying to watch the a product movie. placement. I mean, trying to watch a movie and then fucking Chick Fil A chickens keep popping up and shit. <laughs> no, how much? Is, how much is a uh, cows? Yeah, the, you know, eat more chicken. Yeah, yeah, but the cows saying eat more chicken, not burgers. Oh, yeah, yeah, that whole That's uh, campaign. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah. I just I wonder how much they're gonna charge for the subscription service. Be like two dollars in the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> 
What the fuck? Anyways. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll not be downloading that one. <laughs> yeah, fuck, it, fuck you. Um, even though I might end up doing a show for... Yeah, right? Imagine, I'm like, yeah, where can, where can we find your show, Brandon? Like, on Chick-fil-A. <laughs> you never know. That, that's probably going to be my hubris now. That's going to be what happens to me. Um, so uh, yeah, what else in other me? news, uh, speaking of crazy things that are going on in the world, um, Jack Black and Paul Rudd yes. are basically circling a reimagining of the horror film or horror film, I don't know, of the film Anaconda. Yes. You know, we're talking about, yes, John Voight, Jennifer Lopez um, and Ice Cube. Yeah, Ice Cube. And now we're looking at possibly Jack Black and uh, Paul Rudd. Now, they're saying that the plot may be centered around, you know, a bunch of guys trying to uh, remake uh, their favorite horror movie. The, the, the potential log line, according to sources, is to, uh, it involves a, a group of friends facing midlife crises who are working to remake their favorite movie from their youth. They head to the rainforest only to find themselves in a fight for their lives against natural disasters, giant snakes, and violent criminals. Um, it's unclear who's playing who, but one source said Jack Black would be, Jack Black would be playing an erstwhile director, a man stuck in his job as a vid- wedding videographer, while Rudd will play an actor who did a stint on a cop show, but has seen his Hollywood days slipping further and further away. Another source said it was the other way around. Either way, that sounds great. Get Adam Scott in there from uh, Party Down, and we got some crazy shit going on, That'd but... I mean, it's going to be directed and written by uh, Tom uh, Gorm- Gormakin, who uh, did the meta Nick Cage movie, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, which yeah. was hit or miss for me, but he can do meta. And so th- there's a world where they can get either J-Lo or Ice Cube or J- even John Boyd's crazy ass to come back and be a part of this. If and John Boyd came back, if John Boyd came lose back, it. if John Boyd came back, did that character like method and then he gets eaten by a real snake, that's fucking comedy. You're, it wrote itself. Yeah. It wrote yeah. itself. <laughs> but like, there's a world where this could be really funny. Like, I always think it's funny when uh, people try to re like remake their own family, like favorite films. Mm. Like, did you ever see that movie, Be Kind Rewind, that also starred Jack Black uh. with Most Def? And they try to remake like old classics because they destroyed all the VHS and mm-hmm. shit. Like, it could be funny like that, but like more violent. Yeah. I mean, I- it would be <laughs> like, th- th- this is a very dumb idea. And but I'm here for it. Yeah. And Keisha, one of our Patreon uh, subscribers who's in the chat. Uh, wrote, I definitely watched that movie. It sounds like it'd be really funny. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, um, you know, you get the right script and you get the right cast. That could be a that could be a real hoot as the kids would say. a real hoot, nanny. <laughs> uh, speaking of being a hoot. Um, Ted Lasso is apparently coming back for season four mm-hmm. with options uh, picked up for three core uh, cast members um, who are Hannah Waddingham, who played uh, Richmond owner Rebecca Walton, Brett uh, Goldstein, who played Roy Kent, and Jeremy Swift, who played uh, Leslie Higgins. Um, other uh, cast members are potentially in talks, um, and J- Jason Sudeikis has given his blessing. Now, a lot of people are surprised by this and like, oh, they're coming back for season four. But they always hinted that they were leaving the door open. It's just not necessarily sure if Ted Lasso is going to come back. Yeah. Because I think that character kind of wrapped up pretty well. Mm. But the show is called Ted Lasso, so it'd be weird for him not to show up. But yeah, they would have to change the, I don't know. It's kind of tough because it's like uh, the reason why the Friday Night Lights movie never took off. Yeah. Because it's like, all right, well, you gave Coach Taylor a great ending where he goes to Pennsylvania to be with his wife, you know, supports his wife. And her move. Mm-hmm. So for him to revert back to Texas football, it's kind of like, well, you need to have a pretty yeah, big reason why he's making that shift again. Because that opens up a whole because then they almost break up because yeah. she was like, I want to move, I want this dean job. And he's like, Well, I'm a coach, I'll coach Texas football. That's what I do. He, he yeah. does that breathe. Yeah. And I kind of want to rewatch that show. So do I. It's on Netflix, right? I I don't know. I think it's still on Netflix. So good. I I you know, pa- Paula. I think she doesn't get it. She's just like, is this what like American high school is like? I'm like, no, Paula. <laughs> well, that's what Texas high school is like. That's true. That's very um, true. I mean, I th- I could see her like just not getting the whole football culture. It is really weird. Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, I, I, man, I feel like I want to I want to force Todd to watch it from the beginning because you know she's a cheater. She only started watching it season four. Oh, did she? She literally, like, she was like, oh, Michael B. Jordan's on this. And then oh. she, she just started season four. She didn't watch. She just said, fuck it. 
Well, and, I mean, and there's so much good story. Well, here's what's right. wild though: is you can kind of like jump in season four, and you mm-hmm. can you don't have much to catch up on. Like you can kind of like yeah, figure it out. True. Yeah, you because it, it remember it's kind of a reset because he's going to a new school anyway. They're both at new schools, so you're kind of like, all right, I can kind of guess like what happened there. They bring back some back of the, some of the old players, but not yeah. a lot of them. I mean, Riggins always stays. Yeah. The only thing with season four and five is like, I didn't realize that La- uh, was it Landry. Landry. Landry was a year younger than Luke. I never realized that he was younger than Luke. I thought they were yeah. the same age, but you know, still a great show. Still a great show. Still a great show. And yeah. yes, Michael B. Jordan is on the show, folks. In case you're like, wait, why would Tati watch season four and five? Because those are the seasons where Michael B. Jordan's like the lead. Michael player. B. Jordan's gonna break up your family. I feel like he is. I feel like there's. I saw him do that interview with that chick that he uh, that scorned him when he was in school uh-huh. and shit. I feel like he's gonna get word. Michael B. Jordan, I'm gonna get in a room. Where he's gonna get word that I talk shit about him, and he's gonna intentionally try to fuck my wife. I have a, I have a feeling that that's like the world I'm potentially living in, because I'm getting closer and closer to spaces with Michael B. Jordan. Well, you know, speaking of uh, torn apart families, uh, Ben Affleck <laughs> and uh, J Lo, if you don't know already, have, are officially calling it quits. Yep. Oh, and uh, but you know, if if we're going to laugh at their pain. Which it seems like the whole world is. I mean, did you see those Amazon movies she made? Well, yes. Those are fucking crazy. Yeah, god awful. God awful. They were really bad. Yeah, they're really bad. The documentary wasn't bad. They actually had me rooting for them a little bit. Yeah. The documentary, the movie that I mean, the the movie is terrible. The movie's yeah. god awful. It's a long music video. It's so bad. But um, the documentary actually, I was like, oh, they kind of actually like each other. Yeah. So it's sad. It is a little sad, like because you're doing a full circle thing. I thought they would make it, but nope. Nope. <laughs> Why do they? Nope. Nope. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to make it even more uh, like heartbreaking, Ben Affleck gave J Lo a ring, engagement yes. ring, obviously, and on the ring he had enga- engraved "Not going anywhere." Guess that really didn't stick. Yeah, it's, not, yeah, I mean, it, it's tough. It, like it's really tough and like you know it, it's never fun or funny when you know somebody breaks up but she filed those divorce papers on their anniversary yeah that's, that's a gangster but also j-lo this is her fourth um divorce yeah right and one might say who's the problem i mean i i low-key think that ben affleck might end up getting back to j- together with jennifer garner you think they are they're like very they're very close despite their divorce and stuff like that like she's mm. she checked in on a lot of them. i mean it could also be like you know that's the father of children yeah sure. he has you know you know alcohol issues and stuff like that so she's probably just constantly checking in to make sure he's good mm. but you know i think when you have three kids with someone and you like you know they're together for a long time like yeah but he's also already dating some young uh actress or i forgot no she's um Oh, uh, that was a rumor with the Kennedy uh, RFK's oh, yeah, daughter. Yeah. That's like, you know, he's just hanging out with her, apparently. But yeah, I know. I yeah, know, he, he 50 some odd years old. You listen, don't just hang out with some fucking 36 year old girl. You hang out. You hang your dick out. <laughs> like, ain't no way. He's just hanging out with that young lady. All right. Well, folks, remember, this is a this is also movie gossip. You know, this is a but I'm just saying I'm just we ain't saying. trying to get sued. Nigga. Use your words. <laughs> Oh, Ben Affleck was like, you can't say I'm <laughs> like, you could. This nigga play Batman. <laughs> yes, we got to bro. OK, you tell me. OK, here he goes, guys. Here he goes. You know, I'm just saying you need you need to be careful. OK, we in between jobs right now. Both of us. We can't afford to get sued by Ben Affleck's <laughs> estate. I'm just gonna be like, I ain't got <laughs> <laughs> We could do garnish my wages for the video poker Patreon. Like, I ain't got it. That's it. That's it. It's like, come and get it. You come, you come over to my house and come and get it. I I challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> it's right here. There's a pot of gold on my front in, in the middle of my house. You come and get it, and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> Take one step into my house and see what happens to you. Brandon? Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> Speaking of uh, bad decisions, so Lionsgate uh, recently recalled uh, their latest trailer for Francis Ford Coppola's epic Megalopolis, which uh, featured a litany of fabricate, uh, 
fabricated, <laughs> fabricated quotes from famous Bill Cruz. Folks, can you tell it's been a long day we've been recording? Oh. Um, but uh, apparently, at first when I saw the trailer, it like starts off with like people, you know, talking shit about The Godfather, Apocalypse Now, hmm. um, Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's been taken off the internet, so if you're trying to find it, you yeah, no, no, no. Um, and I was like, oh, that's actually a pretty smart marketing move because I've heard just mixed things mixed and mostly negative things about Megalopolis mm -hmm. from people who have seen it um, and journalists have seen it. And then for them to kind of say, well, you know, people doubted him before and he's made some of the best movies of all time. Yeah. But then to find out that AI created those. Um, hey. Yeah. And so they, uh, they recall, this is why guys, they recalled the trailers, uh, you know, and um, because one of the journalists actually uh, Owen Gliberman, uh, was incorrectly cited calling the 1992 film Brad Stoker's Dracula, a beautiful mess. And he was like, I never wrote that. So, um, yeah, the swiftly these trailers were taken out. Um, it's just the latest string of snafus that are uh, befalling on the film, uh, which Francis Ford Coppola financed himself. So, you know, because last uh, last month, Variety uh, posted about him uh, trying to force a female uh, extra to kiss him on set. Yeah, yeah. So this movie is a mess already. I can't wait to see it in theaters though, because I think that they're still trying to hire those actors to interrupt the movie. Or whatever so that's just gonna be nuts i know i know i can't wait to hear about the assault charges um <laughs> justin what what because do you know there's gonna be some crazy people that are watching this movie that don't know that's supposed to happen oh and they're gonna they're gonna confront that person oh uh, yeah you can't do that at alamo well you can now at alamo drive house because they don't care yeah that's like, the, 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 and how is alamo gonna handle that they're like oh it's a part of the movie but it's like guys like nobody's gonna be they might make a disclaimer uh, yeah, true. They might say, "Hey, just that let you know, sense. at one point in the movie, someone's going to get up and mm. act interact with the movie. That's, Don't be alarmed." That's a, yeah, and then just a crazy person just like, get up and just do <laughs> yeah, it. That's the thing is, if I were to fuck with people, I'd be like, "I'm that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to interact with the film." <laughs> be like, and people were just oh, like, "Oh, we could do that." <laughs> <laughs> just like I was like, "Oh no, oh that, that white boy crazy," and people just going to think I'm part of the movie. <laughs> And then the and actor, the actor opens the doors. It's so crazy. The actor who's actually waiting for his cue is like, "What do I do?" <laughs> oh boy, that's gonna be terrible. What's um, a what's more of movie news that uh, tickled uh, your fancy? Uh, speaking of uh, terrible things, especially terrible things that you like, because I know you love Alamo. Um, the new Jurassic World film unveils title and first look photos. Boy, I really am not looking forward to this movie. So the new film is yeah. going to be called Jurassic World Rebirth. Yeah. Um, it's going to be starring Scarlett Johansson, Jonathan Bailey, and Mahershala Ali. Uh, now, Jurassic World Mahershala Rebirth. Ali. <laughs> Ali. Um, <laughs> it's, see, uh, it's sees an intrepid team racing to secure DNA samples from the three most colossal creatures across the land, sea, and air. Five years after the event of uh, Jurassic World Dominion, even though shouldn't the planet just be destroyed? <laughs> I mean, that's what it's saying. The planet's ecologically has uh, proven largely inhospitable to dinosaurs, which they always said about the DNA. Yeah. And things like that. Those remaining uh, exist, uh, exist in isolated um, environments which, uh, with climates resembling the one in which they uh, once thrived. So basically, it's just like they're going to be in what? Peru? And shit like that. Probably, yeah. So basically, we made dinosaurs and sent them south of the border. Or they migrated south of the border. Like those are the only remaining dinosaurs left, I guess. Well, no, but but that's the same, but yeah. it's the same thing. We made uh dinosaurs and we just and and now they yeah. are just killing brown people. Oh wow, yeah. <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Hansen plays Zora Bennett, a skilled covert opera, uh, operations expert contracted to lead a team on a secret mission to secure genetic material from the world's three most massive dinosaurs. When Zora's operation inter, uh, intersects with a civilian family whose boating expedition was capsized by marauding aqua aquatic dinos, they all find themselves stranded on an island where they come face to face with a sister, shocking discovery that's been hidden from the world for decades. So that means another pride dinosaur hybrid. Yeah. Um, Gareth Edwards, who did Rogue One, a Star Wars, uh, Star Wars story, is directing from a script from original Jurassic Park scribe David Cope. Um, and then Ali plays Zora's most uh, trusted team leader, Duncan Kincaid, and Bailey plays paleontologist Dr. Emery Loomis. Interesting. Um, Jurassic, people, people know, like, if you listen to the show for a long time, you know that uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and Jurassic World Dominion are some of the worst 
sequels I've ever seen in my life. Um, Jurassic World Rebirth, uh, to be honest with you, doesn't inspire a lot of confidence, but I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan. I'm going to go see this movie regardless, but I definitely think this is one of those franchises when people talk about the MCU losing steam or mm-hmm. other franchises like, you know, Indiana Jones losing steam. Jurassic World is one of those, uh, you know, series now that I think of that. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is, because we didn't do what we could have done the last movie where it's like, we just follow these families trying, like maybe a family trying to navigate a world with fucking dinosaurs just roam free mm-hmm. and what that does. And like, cause you know, I get it. It's fiction. But at a certain point, you got to kind of talk about some real world shit. And you could have done some deep shit with that. Like, been like, how does this affect my kids being able to get educated? They can't just sit in the classroom when the book of Velociraptors fucking walking down the hallway. Well, the no. hall monitor ain't stopping that nigga. <laughs> what do you do? I mean, they can't just hall walk pass. To- <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Mr. Dinosaur. <laughs> what are you talking about? But, I mean, it's it- so crazy. I mean, also, you can't just send your kids to school. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can't take out your garbage, bro. Like, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World Dominion, we fought a clone child. I don't give a fuck. Show me some real shit. You know what I mean? There was just such wasted potential and so much yeah. money on a really actually interesting potential story. But anyways. Yeah, that was uh, dumb. So, uh, Fantastic Four is uh, currently in production. Uh, Fantastic Four First Steps. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, I did correct myself. And it turns out that the thing might actually be practical effects. Um, it looks like Ebon uh, uh, Mas- uh, Ebok, um, who plays uh, is playing the thing, um, might actually be part of like some kind of animatronic situation. It's not going to be fully CGI, at least not from what is being shown on set, which is interesting. So- I was wondering, that because that's the one thing that Never quite worked for me with Fantastic Four, besides Invisible Girl, mm. which is the, the thing always looked ridiculous. Yeah. No matter which way you slice, whether it's the Michael Chillis uh, version or mm. the Chickless version or the Jamie Bell like CGI version, it just never quite works. So I'm interested to see how this comes out. Yeah. It's got to work, though. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it has to. Because I think there's a lot riding on Reed Richards being a big part of the MCU going forward. Yeah, for sure. Hey, you hire Pedro Pascal because you want to. You want him to be around for a while in mm-hmm. your franchise. Yeah. Even though, yeah, man. Pedro Pascal, Robert Downey Jr. Who else is around? I mean, Chris Hemsworth kind of. Well, I mean, Latisha Wright. No Ali because they canceled the Blade. Yeah, Simu Lee. Well, that's not official yet, but I feel like there's news coming soon. Yeah, I, I, I think. So. I think I, I think they're probably gonna wrap, or they might make it a series. I think at this point you may as well make it a series and try to do a feature film. But I think with every, it's just Marvel's a mess, you know. Because uh, did you see the Ultron news with yes. James Spader? Yeah, yeah. You want to read about that? Yeah, I, I mean, I wasn't going to, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I, was, I was literally leading into something else. But I guess I, I will. I guess I will now. Um, well, he's coming back as the voice of Ultron. Yes, you know, for the Wanda Vision spinoff about uh, uh, um, Vision. Yeah, Vision Quest. Vision, vision quest. quest with white vision now, right? Yeah. He's, I don't give a fuck. I, white like, vision is something from the comics. Though. I get it, but it's like one of the least interesting characters for me in the MCU. Well, I mean, yeah, because it's kind of like a god, just you know. Yeah, just, and he's just, just very just, monotone. Like he can't really, you know. Yeah, I, I really don't see a full series centered around him being very interesting. Like, mm. I don't see why they're doing it. And I imagine that Ultra, like, well, mind you, Ultron was obviously, the, you know, destroyed in yes. the Age of Ultron. Yeah, he killed Ultron. So, like, I don't know how that comes back yeah. unless he comes back in so, as some form of, um, you know. AI that, that takes over his brain, maybe, or something. Yeah, within, from within uh, yeah. Vision. That could or, work. Yeah, so, like. That would make sense to me. Yeah. Uh, but then like how's like like what's gonna come of that? Yeah. Like like there's a lot of questions with this. Yes. Especially with Ultron coming back. This is like also a uh, why. <laughs> you know, yeah, because this is different like than what if, right? Where yeah. it's like, okay, what if like Ultron had succeeded or he like actually did something good and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know. I just this is one of those Marvel mo- shows where I'm like, I kind of roll my eyes. I'm like, sure, whatever, man. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, same with uh, I never watched Peaky, Peaky Blinders on Netflix. 
Um, I've heard good things, but I haven't watched it myself. Um, but they're getting a movie. Now, I wasn't interested at first, but now they added Barry Keoghan and Rebecca Ferguson. So now I'm kind of like, okay, do I have to get into Piggy Blinders? Because <laughs> Barry Keoghan, I think, is one of the most interesting actors. Like he and he and Lakeith Stanfield do such weird shit. Yeah. That I'm kind of like, I don't watch anything you do. Except uh, Book of Fucking. <laughs> no, but Book of Eli, the, despite, you know, folks, our, our review is coming out at some point. Book of um, Eli was one with uh, no, that's a Denzel yeah. book. Uh, Clarence, Clarence, yes. Um, that's already a bad sign. We can't believe really remember the mm-hmm. title, but <laughs> he he wasn't bad in it. No, it's just a movie kind of feel. Yeah. Um, he he's had he's had some hits and misses, more misses of late. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, he's a very interesting actor, and so is Barry Keoghan. Um, and he gets to speak in this like Irish uh accent in this one, so I'll check it out. I mean, I'll start watching Peaky Blinders and I'll let you know, you know, because those are my people. So. <laughs> Speaking of your people, uh, you know, Bad Bunny is back into the acting Bad game. Bunny, baby, baby. Yeah, baby. so Bad Bunny is going to be joining up uh, in that new uh, Austin Butler uh, f- uh, crime thriller yeah. called Caught Stealing. Uh, Darren Aronofsky. So this film is uh, it follows uh, Butler's character, Hank Thompson, a burned out former baseball player. And he's unwitting, unwittingly plunged into a wild fight for survival in a downtown criminal underworld of 1990s New York City. Um, Now, it's unknown who Bad Bunny will be playing uh, in this film, but I imagine it is going to be somebody in Spanish. (laughs) It's it's a interesting. I actually um, there's some casting calls for extras and stuff on this. Yeah, I see it a lot. Um, It'd be interesting because you know Darren Everett asking hasn't gone really gritty. Like Requiem for Dream was pretty fucking gritty. Mm -hmm. It'd be cool if he kind of returned to those roots. Yeah. Um, But it'd be wild if he got Austin Butler his Oscar after directing the dude do Austin Butler beat who got beat by because he he directed Brendan Fraser in The Whale. Oh, so be it's interesting, like to you know that yeah, he's sign up for that. I mean, Austin Butler, he's he's been solid. Like his no, movies have definitely been hit or miss for me, but I just saw the Bike Riders. He's really good in that. Like he's got something, man. No, he listen and, and guys, you you guys know I'm not you know the biggest Austin Austin fan. Not, I was just about to say Austin Butler. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, of fucking Elvis Presley fan. Yes. Uh, but I he think did he thing. did a, a great job with that. Film. Anytime anyone asks me about that movie, I always say the movie's a mess. Tom Hanks is out of his fucking mind. Yeah. But, but Austin Butler great. killed that. Yeah, he did. He did a really yeah. good job with the, uh, what he was given. Yeah. I was impressed by him in that film. Yeah, we were. All right. Uh, so now we jump into a uh, new segment, um, folks, for our movie news and uh, trailer reactions called Hashtag Black Actors. Huh? I'm rooting for um everybody black. Oh, okay. Because I was gonna go hashtag black actors. <laughs> That's just because you like singing. You like any excuse to sing like Michael B. Donald because you're fucking out of your mind. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, this isn't the most positive news, but Amanda Ster- uh, Stenberg from the Acolyte um, says she's not surprised that the Acolyte was canceled because uh, the rampage of vitriol from toxic Star Wars fans. Yep. She recently went on uh, Instagram Live to speak her truth. She said, I'm going to be transparent and say it's not a huge shock, shock for me. There's a huge uh, rampage of vitriol that we faced since the movie was even, in, uh, the show was even announced when it was still just the concept and no one had seen it. That's when we started experiencing a rampage of, I would say, hyper conservative bigotry, vitriol, prejudice, hatred, and hateful language towards us, um, which means that Disney is still not getting better at protecting these actors of color that sign yep. up for these franchises. And so, you know, but that between between that and like companies phasing out DEI initiatives and things like that, it's like, oh, we, we see what y'all are doing. Yeah. We see what's happening, guys. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to remember this shit. Like, this is this kind of stuff that like, honestly, like white people in power fear will happen, which is that people of color are going to retaliate against the oppression they've been, that's been put on them. Yeah. When you do shit like this, when you make people miserable before they even get to show what they're capable of. Yep. That's what creates that bitterness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I get it. We're talking about Star Wars and pretend characters and shit. But, but, it, but these are real bigger, people. Yeah, these are people that are just trying to do their art and they can't even get on set for day one before thinking about how much people hate them. Yeah. And for no reason. It's fucking ridiculous. No reason. 
uh, in other news, uh, talk about people who hate. <laughs> Ice T got asked if Law and Order SVU will go back to normal after it started going woke. <laughs> and as Ice T, you know, he just responded as Ice T would. Yep. What the fuck is woke? <laughs> <laughs> LOL, like I give a fuck. Um, so, so, yeah, you know, Icy's been on Law and Order since the year of the fucking so flood. Uh, <laughs> fucking, they're in season 26 uh, right now. Uh, and, you know, but Ice T has said, you know, himself is like, he's like, I'm not a cop. I'm the furthest thing from a cop. He also acknowledged that playing a law enforcement officer on television has become increasingly difficult in recent years. People have said that our TV show, that television shows uh, our police propaganda making the police look good. I understand that argument. The cop I am on the show is a SVU detective. When I get the cop, when I get a job at SVU, Dick Wolf said to me, Ice, you don't like cops, right? I told him during my criminal past, I, I didn't hate cops. They were my opponents. He asked, but you admit <laughs> we need them, right? I said, yeah. So Wolf told me to play the cop that we need. And if I play the cop that we need, I don't have I don't have any problems with it. Fair. Yeah, he don't um, have a problem with those checks and residuals either. Exactly. Um, you ain't gonna fuck up his bag. When it really comes down to it, it's like, you know, oh, SVU went woke. How does SVU go? I think that's just a ridiculous thing to say. It's insane. Um, I mean, but the people, whole woke thing is stupid. Every 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 time someone says woke, like Bill Maher or Joe Rogan say it, it's like, come on, guys. I, we, just go ahead and say too many too many black people, too many yeah, too many gay people. Like it's it's not my shit. Mm -hmm. Like I've ne I don't understand. And folks, like you know, like. We're we're down to have a conversation. Obviously, we're mood review podcast, but you know, like it's what is it about people that are not like you that make you so uncomfortable? If they're not bothering you, if they're not inflicting harm on people you or you, you know, your family love and shit like that, who the fuck cares? Just let things happen. Well, because I'll tell you why, Brandon. Because they don't want to have to explain to their children that there are different kinds of people in on, on this on this fucking globe. There are black people. There are gay people. There are men that love this uh, kind of uh, uh, th th that love another man, a woman that loves another woman. They can't have that conversation with their children because children's little minds can't comprehend that there's different kinds of people on Earth. Yeah. That's but, what all it is, Brandon. There's like, they want to preserve their yeah. innocence. Yeah, we'll preserve their innocence. Meanwhile, like, you know, there's abuse and, and hunger at home and shit mm -hmm. like that. It's like, hey, I don't care if our neighbor's gay. When are we going to have substance? When, yeah. Can we get at least a salad in this house? <laughs> like, come on, Dad. It's like, hey, I don't, I can't count the four and I'm eight. Like, <laughs> he's like, you know, Daddy, I think maybe things could be a lot po more positive. You stop bringing home secrets gin every night. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, Dad, maybe you should stop beating mom. Like, what about yeah. that? Worry about your fucking house. Yeah. But I mean, that's besides the point. Yeah, we took a left turn here. But... You, you know, it's just because there's so much going on right now, obviously, with, you know, the big overarching fucking thing going on with, you know, the election yeah. and everything, the DEI hires and everything. And then you have all of like Ford and all these companies just like, yeah, we're backing away from that. So like you're yeah. just basically giving into bigotry. Yeah, I mean, there's people like blatantly saying, like, if I see a black pilot, I want to think that they're not qualified to be a pilot. It's like, nigga, what do you think pilots do? Like, do you think they just let anybody do that shit? Like, hey, yeah. hey, you know what? Because you're black, you probably haven't gotten many opportunities to fly a plane. We're gonna let you fly this for <laughs> this Delta Airlines flight to fucking 747. Yeah, what are you talking get, about? Get, get up there, Kwame. Show it. Give us your best. So like if anyone got a pass, it's probably the black dude in the in aviation school. It's like, are you kidding me? They got the hardest fucking job because exactly. everyone was doubting them and they probably had even more uh, well, and, and you know and folks that live like that they don't think that that's what happens but the people of color who are in these positions they actually got probably more scrutiny so, and i i know that because i experienced that myself yeah i mean I i'm mean, like why are you going so hard at me we're in a musical we're play in, <laughs> we're we're in the job market right now I'm in the job market yeah. right now and, you know, trying to and like there are things that I'm overqualified for, but I just need a job and I will not. They can't give, even get somebody to even look at me. 
And, and there's and they're saying like, oh, well, you know, you, just, you want the best person hired for the job. Well, I'm the best person, but but, that, but they won't they don't even think about me. Yeah. And they say, well, if it's only about who, you know, it, like you, you, the person will shine through. Oh, yeah. How does that worked out in history before? Because when it comes yeah. down to if like if I have the same qualifications as, you know, some guy named Paul, you know, or wherever and he's a white dude and it comes down to it, typically Paul wins out because they feel more comfortable with Paul sitting in the, in that um, in that yeah. office uh, than me. And that's just hey, the your last name was Brown and you are Brown. So it's, I it's know two four. Yeah. Like, like what? <laughs> <laughs> Browns. <laughs> Speaking of Browns uh, who have, um, you know, a very strong legacy and uh, who are no longer with us. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, we recently um, passed the fourth anniversary of Chadwick Boseman's, uh, you know, uh, tragic uh, death. Um, bat- after his battle with cancer, um, <laughs> you lost me on that one for a second. I know, like, battle yeah. with death, like he's fighting <laughs> yeah, Browns. I was just like, well, I, I know, know. I, I try to do the segues, and yeah. sometimes they don't always land. <laughs> they work. Um, I know they don't always work. Um, but yeah, he got shouted out by uh, you know, it's Marvel family, Lupita Nyongo and James Gunn, um, sharing memories of him, and um, a lot of social media uh, love was shown for Mr. Bozeman, including from our account. Um, his talent is still very much missed. I think it's um. A huge void, I yeah. think, in cinema right now. Um, and it's really tragic to think about what he could have done um, after he was just getting started. So um, rest in power, Kim. Indeed. Indeed. Yep. Uh, two trailers came out since our last mini episode that are worth talking about. The first is Craven the Hunter, the alien, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson adaptation of the Marvel villain. Uh, it showed some shots now of the Rhino. Uh, Sony's trying to do that character again. Yeah. Um, I think you got Chameleon in there. Mm-hmm. Or is that Scorpion? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I. Uh, um, uh, I guess my my uh, big question for this was, uh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, is he <laughs> is he is he Lion Man? What is like? He has superpowers, right? What the fuck is this? Yeah, because like they make him like superpower, right? Almost, pretty much. Because that's not the craven I know. Because this thing is just literally he's in a prison and he just rips this whole fucking place apart and then stabs this guy's and then cuts this guy's throat. Out. I'm like, what is happening? I mean, it's going to be crazy violent. Yeah, I'm very confused. As to, I don't know what the fuck Sony's doing. Sony doesn't even know what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, the plus side is the director's pretty solid. He did uh, Triple Frontier. He's done a uh, margin call. JC San- uh, Kander is actually a pretty solid director, but he's also working with the Sony Marvel fuck machine. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. Just a fuck machine. <laughs> I'm going to fuck on somebody. <laughs> Woo, child. Um, but yeah, this looks like a, a hot mess. It, it can't does. be. It can't be. Okay. It can't be worse than Morbius. It can't be worse than Morbius or it Bad or Well. But yeah. Sony's given us some of the worst comic book movies of all the time. They, uh, they have. It's, 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 all, it's laughable how bad the movies yeah. that they've put together have been. Yeah, but it's also laughable about how low the expectations are for a movie like Craven the Hunter. So it actually could surprise us to be fairly decent the, the bar it. isn't I that doubt high. i doubt it i, I know doubt it. but aaron taylor johnson's solid when he has good material yeah it's a decent director do you think there's gonna be good material though no i think the rhino look like dog shit the yeah. rhino look terrible um i don't know man I, I just i try to stay positive but i also don't want this low-key i don't want this to be a hit because sony i think will get the wrong idea and be like oh now we can take spider-man back and do our own thing well, i mean like, you see what they did with fucking um uh oh, tom hardy i don't know why i'm getting all his fucking movies uh venom venom yes yeah. yeah like but they, venom movies are hits yeah that's the problem i mean well the first one was good i thought i thought the, well i thought the first one was decent I thought yeah. the first one was decent. The second one was absolutely fucking, you know, garbage. Hot yeah. garbage on the... Yeah, on, I don't on, like on any of them. I just think it's... I just think Venom doesn't work as a movie uh, titular character. I just... Uh, that's just me. Though. Yeah, it's it's better the way he was written. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's why they're doing the things that they're doing. Because it's just like, exactly. oh, we could make this work. Because yeah. Look what we did with Venom. It's just like, y'all fucked up. <laughs> y'all fucked up. That's y'all what, fucked up. That's what you keep on doing, too. Keep fucking up and see what happens. Well, I mean, they're making money, apparently. Yeah. I mean, Madam Web probably did fairly well on Netflix when it got there. Yeah, because people, people are were just, just like people are just making fun of it. Well, it's also that and also, I mean, Cindy Sweeney's in it. 
and she's pretty popular right now. Yeah. So that definitely helped. And remember, they have that scene where she's just doing CPR and pumping up her boobs. So it's just such a crazy movie. That movie is so fucking wild. Like the fact that they got in the post production and like editing booth, but like lock it in. <laughs> like, that's so crazy. Um, it's the one, guys. <laughs> and the last show we watched was uh, the three cool to decide the Hedgehog series, uh, Sonic 3, which introduces Shadow, the Hedgehog, played by Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got Keanu Reeves and Aegis Alba both in the Sonic ser- uh, universe. Yeah. Um, and of, of course, Jim Carrey's back as Robotnik, aka Eggman. And he's actually playing Robotnik and Robotnik's father, which is an interesting twist. Now, you're rolling your eyes. I imagine you thought this trailer was corny. I thought it was corny too. But at the same time, when you see these movies, for me, the trailers always look corny. And then I see the movies and I'm actually, they're actually a lot of fun. Uh, well, the crazy thing is like, it actually looks, it looks great. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the, the effects and such. Like yeah. that. I actually think that it, it, it looks pretty great. Um, and the funny thing is, as I'm sitting, I was I was watching this. I was just thinking, it was like, Jackson's gonna like this. Yeah, it's for kids. Yeah, no, no, but um, but yeah. it's just like, because like you know, Jackson's friends, who, yeah. you know, they you know they're big fans of Sonic and things like that. Did you watch the Knuckles series? No, I didn't. It's cute. It's cute. It's fun. It's weird. Yeah, yes. Idris's Knuckles is one of the like I did not see that happening. Like I didn't see that match with that character. Mm-hmm. I always was like, who would voice Knuckles? Wasn't Idris? Uh. But he's Knuckles is weird, man. And this universe, Knuckles is a fucking he does some really wild shit, dude. Well, I mean, in this trailer, he's just like, he's like, we're not gonna fight him. He's like, I wanna fight him. <laughs> yeah, he's the fucking uh, um Ralph Rocky of the group when it comes to three ninjas. Ralph Rocky? He's the Rocky of the group, right? <laughs> Rocky is the one who uh, was like, Oh, I'm gonna fight everybody. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's fucking crazy. But Shadow was taking them all to church. Yeah, yeah, he bust that ass. He was, he was like fucking zooming in and shit. Like if he's fucking Nightcrawler. Yeah, yeah, very so, Nightcrawler. I'm, I'm, a, I, I never was like a. I, I think I moved past Sonic games by the yeah. time Shadow got introduced. Yeah. So I know a lot of people were big fans of Shadow, and I saw a lot of excitement online. Mm. So I'm actually kind of intrigued because I'm like I don't know enough about the character. So I'm actually Neither for the I. first time I'm going in completely blank on a Sonic character. Hmm. So I'm kind of like. If, you know, and Keanu's doing the voice. I'm like, you know, maybe there's worse things that could happen to me. I'll throw on the, the Sonic movies and see what it, Jackson thinks about it. Yeah. One of these days, Jackson's going to do a review of, of a film. Oh, that'd be cute. It, it's yeah. not going to be anytime soon, but <laughs> eventually, <laughs> eventually, I know he's going to, he, he, I'm going to bring him on, you know, for the kids' uh, okay. review. Anticipation uh, for that, everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, folks, as always, you know, you can follow me at Frodo underscore Black and some, on threads and Instagram. You can follow the show at MediMP Podcast and all uh, social media platforms. And Justin P, want to follow you as well, support the show financially. What can they do, my brother? Guys, you can follow me at Jay Brown baby, Did It on baby. all the social media platforms. But you can also support this show on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Medium Popcorn. We have $2, $5, $10, and $15 packages. Come see our packages. Our entire backlog is on Patreon. Come see our packages and our backlog. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com slash media popcorn. Yes, check out the <laughs> You set me up. I didn't... No, I just said what I was supposed to say. <laughs> Guys, that's it. That's it. That's oh, it. if money's tight, leave us a five star review in your favorite podcast application. Or like we said earlier in the show, you can leave a comment on Spotify. We will read it on future episodes. All that good stuff. But again, patreon.com slash media popcorn, whereas you really can support the show. You know you love me, baby. Nice. Um and uh <laughs> Don't be with a lead pipe. Why would you have a lead pipe? This is a 1952. Why are you so old sometimes? Why are you, you so old? No lead back there for me to beat you with? You think I have lead pipes in my house? You think you think I can't find a pipe to beat your ass with? <laughs> Why are you you're like I can't get a job? Maybe stop threatening to <laughs> on a <the> podcast. <laughs> Patreon.com/slash media popcorn, y'all. Help Peace. Us. <laughs>